In order for the player to hold the ball, we need to do something a little bit different here. So we need to write a script for our player, for our first person shooter controller. So we can write some logic here. In the beginning of the game, the player is going to be holding the basketball. And if you click, it's going to release and apply a certain force to throw the basketball. Okay, so first things first, we want to select the FPS controller. We go to the inspector and we rename it to player, just to make sure we understand that we are in fact dealing with a player. In the inspector, let's collapse a few of these components, a few of these behaviors here. And now we're going to the project folder. We're going to create a new folder and we're going to name this scripts. And inside scripts, we're going to choose create C sharp script. So we're going to write code for this player. Here in scripts, I'm simply going to name this player. Okay. Once you hit enter, you're going to see this little spinning wheel here, just to say that your code is being processed. It happens every time you change or you create any line of code. And after this is done, you can just double click the player to open mono develop, which already comes with unity. And it's a great coding tool. Okay, so just wait a little bit, it's going to be ready soon. And after this is loaded, we're going to be able to see what code Unity already uh, left for us. Okay, and once you make this script, we also need to make sure that this is going to be executed by the player. So we need to add this script as a component for the player. Okay, there we go. So before we write anything here, let's make what I just did. We're going to select the player in the hierarchy, go to the scripts folder drag the player script that we just made and drop in the player, just like that. And if you look at the inspector, the player script that you just made is right here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open mono develop and see a few things. Okay. The script is not empty. We already have some things for us. So let's take a very quick view here. These three lines are basically the using command. Okay. It's to include namespaces It's to include a uh, kind of uh, a package of things that were already implemented in Unity. So we can use collections, we can use uh, the Unity engine elements, for example, it's just to enable the usage of a few things. And here is the actual definition of the player behavior. Okay, we have two methods, start and update. And methods are going to be a collection of instructions that are going to make something happen. Okay. Start happens when our player is ready to be used and update happens all the time. Okay, it's, it's very useful for checking some things. But we want this player to be able to know what and where is the basketball. Okay, so to do this, we're going to make a variable here. We're going to type public game object ball like this. So we're making a variable called ball its type is game object. Remember what I told you before, it's the, the basic element in Unity. And it's going to be public so it can be accessed in the Unity editor. Okay, so let's see one thing at a time. We're going to save this script by going to file and hitting save. If you go to Unity, you're going to see that the code is going to be processed one more time. And if you look at the player script, a new uh, field appeared here. Okay, so we have ball and it's set to none because it doesn't know Oh, what is the ball? So to make the assignment here, we're going to select the ball in the hierarchy, drag and drop it here. Okay, so uh, you see that the eye can change, there's a new text here, it means that this variable in the player's code is now referencing this ball here. Okay, so that's everything we needed to know to reference the ball. Okay, and now the behavior that we want to do is if the player looks to whatever they want to look, the ball is going to follow. We want to give uh, the, the, the feeling to the player that they are actually holding the ball. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We need to add a new reference here. And what we need to do is we need to reference this first person character. And why is that? As the player is rotating around by moving the mouse, this camera here is going to be uh, ha is going to have a different rotation. So we need to have a reference for the player's camera. So I'm going to come here in the player, and I'm going to type public game object player camera. Okay. Let's save this. Go to Unity. Wait for the code to be processed. And after that, we're going to grab this first person character object from here and drop it here. 
okay it's the one that is holding the player camera okay now that this is done uh, what we want to do in the beginning is to disable the rigid body from the ball. You might think that's odd because we just uh, added a rigid body to it. The thing is, if we try to move the ball and with the technique that we're going to use, physics are still going to be applied, so some strange bugs might happen. If you're not used to Unity, you might not understand what's going on. So a trick is, we can just disable the rigid body and then look around, and if we click to shoot, then we enable the rigid body again. But how do we do this? We can just go to the player script in the start method and type get component and between the lesser than and greater than signs between these two characters we're going to type rigid body because we're accessing the rigid body class. We're going to open and close parenthesis and then type dot enabled actually in this case we're going to disable just the gravity so we're going to type dot use gravity equals to false. Okay, so the ball is not going to fall, but we still have the rigid body. That's perfectly fine for us. This happens in the start method. Okay, so right now let's see how this is going to look like. If we save and go to Unity and press the play button to test it out, we're going to see that the ball is going to be floating around. Okay, actually not yet. And yes, the rigid body is not being disabled because we're trying to change the rigid body of the player. Remember, here we are in the player script. So when we type get component rigid body, we are trying to get the rigid body from the player. But we want to do this with the ball. So here we're going to start by typing ball dot get component rigid body use gravity is going to be false. Okay, let's try that one more time. We save, go to Unity, and then we're going to press the play button. And if you look at the basketball, it's going to be hovering around. Okay, even though you can hit it and make it move, that's going to be just fine for now. Okay, and now when we want, when the player is going to look to look around, we want the ball to be right in front of the player. So to do this, we need to go to the update method, and we're going to change the ball's position directly. How do we do this? Here we're going to type ball dot transform dot position equals two. And then we have to set the position of the ball. We're going to do this in a different way. We're going to make the ball to be right where the player camera is and then add a little offset. What we do is, independently of where the player is looking to, we're going to make the ball to be a certain distance away from where we are looking. So to do this, there are two things we need to do in the update method. We type ball.transfer.position and then equals to. The first thing, player, camera dot transform dot position okay this is going to make the ball to be right where the player camera is and now to make it further away from the camera we type the plus sign and then player camera dot transform dot forward so there are two interesting things we have to talk about here these two elements position and forward they're both vector 3 they're a collection of three elements x y and z horizontal position, vertical position, and depth position. However, position here is referencing to a point in the world, but forward is referencing a direction, okay? So this doesn't have anything related to position. It's not the absolute position in the world. It's relative. It's like an arrow that is going to point somewhere. And we have forward, but we also have up, down, left, right, in all of these vectors, they have a magnitude of 1. That means that these arrows, the size, the length of these arrows is 1. So if you want to make the basketball to be uh, a further away from the player, you can just get this forward and multiply by any number you want. If you put 2, it's going to be 2 units away from the player in the forward vector. You can use 3, you can use 5, you can use a half, for example. But we're going to use 2 here. Okay, we're going to save and see how this is going to look like. Let's go to Unity, wait for the code to be ready. Let's also save the scene from time to time, just to make sure we don't lose anything. And we're going to press play. Now, notice that wherever I look, the ball is is basically following our, our player, okay, our stance. So this is how it's looking like. If you don't think this is a good distance, well, you could stop the scene, go to Unity, change that again, and that might take some time. So what you could do to speed that process up is to just go here, 
where we define the ball and the player camera and we can type public float ball distance and I'm going to set it as 2f by the fall. Okay, so we made a variable called ball distance. It's a floating point number, so it can have a decimal part, and we set it as 2f. That's basically 2. So if we save that, we also have to go to the update method and change this 2 here to ball distance. Okay, let's save this, go to Unity, wait for the code to be ready, and now if we press the play button, Okay, you see that the ball is in this position here, but if I come to the player script, I can change that distance to anything I want. Okay, we can basically test things, try to find a good value, and then after we, we agree that we have a good value, like 2.25, for example, uh, we can just write that number down, stop the scene, come here, and rewrite it by typing 2.25. Okay, so this is the value that we are going to use. Now we have a player that holds a basketball, but we still aren't able to throw it. Let's learn how to do this in the next lesson.